friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. Today we are going to be doing what was supposed to be a mid-month wrap-up, but I didn't get my act together. So we're calling it part one of my June wrap-up. <laughs> I feel like I haven't read very much this month, and I think that's because three of the books that I started at the beginning of the month, I'm still working on. But I do have one, two, three, four, five, I do have six books to tell you about today. Uh, and four of them were audiobooks. I've only finished two physical books so far this month, but I did finish four audiobooks. And I'm going to be doing something a little bit different that I'm going to be adding to my to my wrap-ups this month and maybe going forward, because I think this is a lot of fun. You can tell me what you think. But with each book that I talk about, I'm going to share one quote that jumped out to me from these books. I've started keeping a little post-it, just like in the back of the book or, or somewhere so that when a quote jumps out to me, I can write it down. I'm not a big writer downer of quotes, but I'm going to. And since I've held up this first book, this is the first one that I'm going to talk about. I did read A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. I am participating in the book buddy this month. And this is the book I chose for Amanda from the Curly Readers favorite color because she didn't really give me a color, but she said blue and she said green and this has both on them. This one is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and I loved it. It's so good. So it is YA and it's a different twist on Beauty and the Beast than I've read before and I really enjoyed it. I love uh, the Belle character who's Harper. She has a cerebral palsy and is a tough cookie. She's fantastic as a character, which I just love seeing that representation in here. She is often underestimated because of her cerebral palsy. People think that she can't do a lot of things and she shows them wrong over and over and over again. She's confident. She knows who she is. She's strong-willed. She stands up for the people that she loves. She's wonderful. I loved her as a character. And then Ren is our beast character. And so in this book, we kind of have two worlds. And right at the beginning, Harper is kind of snatched from her world, unbeknownst to her, into this world where Ren the Beast lives. It's just so much fun. There's so much like good banter between the two of them. Uh, Harper's just a fantastic character. I really love that. And the quote that I want to share from this one is, um, I am always surprised to discover that when the world seems darkest, there exists the greatest opportunity for light. Whew, I love that. I read this right at the beginning of the month. And so it was just looking at some of the darkest places in our society and where that work still needs to continue for sure. But I love that this quote just reminds us that even in when the world seems the darkest, there exists the greatest opportunity for light. That quote absolutely jumped out at me and I've seen so much light in this time as well. People being honest with themselves and with others and coming together and standing with each other. It's There's been a lot of light in the midst of all the darkness. So yeah, that's my quote for that book. I gave this five stars. It will probably be among my favorites for the year. And I'm really excited because the sequel's already out. So I'm on hold for it at the library <laughs> behind a lot of other people, I think. So it'll be a while, but I'm very excited to continue with this. I don't know if it's a duology, trilogy. I don't know, but I'm excited for the next one. The other non-audiobook, the other print book that I read is a library book and it's American Royals. It's also a YA and this is by Catherine McGee. This was so much fun. So this book was kind of a reimagining of America. What if George Washington became king instead of president and we didn't have a democracy but a monarchy? So then we have centuries of this royal family. So in this is takes place in kind of modern times with our royal family. So there are three siblings, Princess B, who is the gonna succeed to the throne. The rules have, the laws have just been changed where a woman can become the new monarch. Um, so Princess B and then twins, Samantha and Prince Jefferson. We follow three different perspectives, Beatrice, Samantha, 
and her best friend Nina. We just kind of are in the midst of this royal family and it was so much fun. I think I gave this four stars. I really enjoyed it. The sequel is coming out this fall so I'm very excited to continue on. I definitely plan on reading the next one. It's a little more on the light-hearted side. It definitely didn't delve into too many deep issues but just family stuff like and what would it be like to constantly be in the spotlight and have all of these expectations placed on you uh, and, and not really necessarily want to live up to what people want you to do. Uh, so this was, it was really good. The quote that stands out to me from this book is, only by engaging with the past can we avoid repeating it. Again, very timely and relevant quotes are jumping out at me. So definitely agree with that quote that if, unless we engage with the past, uh, we cannot avoid repeating it over and over again, which we see happening. So definitely enjoyed this one. Four stars, a lot of fun. Now we're jumping into the audiobooks that I listened to and talk about sequels. All four of these precede me in some series that I'm in the middle of. They precede me onto the next one. So the first one is from the Hagenheim series. It's The Captive Maiden by Melanie Dickerson. This is a retelling of Cinderella. Probably of the this will be the fourth in this series that I've reread. This one I think gave me the most eye rolls. I didn't like it as much as some of the other ones. Um, I still really enjoyed it. I'm still planning on continuing through. I'm almost at the point. I think this might be as far as I got in my first reread, but I do have two more already downloaded from Hoopla to read. I'm gonna be traveling this weekend, and I have two more to read. Um, while I'm traveling. I think I only gave this one three stars. Like I said, it's a Cinderella retelling. We meet some of the characters that are in the other books, um, but it's a pretty straightforward girl loses her father. Her father gets remarried to a horrible woman. Her father passes away. The woman becomes the evil stepmother. She's got the two evil stepsisters and she falls in love with the prince. It's a very straightforward Cinderella retelling, but it's still a lot of fun. And it is, um, again, a Christian fiction, Christian YA, young YA, I still say. It doesn't have too much that um, is that deep or inappropriate for, for young readers. The quote I want to read from this um, does express some of the, the faith elements of the book, but it says, uh, God wants us all to strive to grow more like Jesus to become holy as he is holy, but God has a specific purpose for each person. How could it not be so? Everyone in a village cannot be a baker because who then would make the candles or shoe the horses or grow the food? God says we are like a body, just as the villagers are part of a village and have different tasks. We all have tasks to do for the Lord. So I loved that and really agree with it. We all have different purposes in our lives and just thought that that was a really good quote. So moving on to another sequel that I read is The Brutal Telling by Louise Penny. This is book four in the Inspector Gamache. It's a cheap Inspector Gamache novel. This one, we're back in Three Pines, which is amazing that so many murders happen in this little tiny town, but I love the town. I love the characters. I love Inspector Gamache, and I love how in depth in the characters these this series goes. Louise Penny just does such a great job. We are following this kind of rivalry between this partner couple in the town who run a B&B bistro and then this new family moves into one of the houses that had been abandoned in previous books and they fix it up and they're going to have this hotel slash spa. So these two businesses are kind of rivals with each other. So we have that storyline in here. We also have uh, the storyline of Peter and Clara who are both artists and Clara is really progressing forward in her art. She's kind of the the novice and Peter is supposedly the one who has more experience. But Clara kind of has this genius. She has this ability to paint that takes everybody by surprise and she's starting to kind of rise above where her husband is and so there's these jealousies and intricacies of that storyline and then of course we have the murder and Inspector Gamache and his team coming to solve this situation but all of these storylines are woven together so beautifully and I love the the way Inspector Gamache leads his team and the way that he really encourages them to listen not just to what people are saying but how they're saying it and their body language and um, to really get behind the how and the how and why of a murder and not just the details of what happened 
but to find that motive and really why why is that why do we need to know that what 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 was the real true motivation going on behind here so it's a lot of psychology involved as well so so good so good I'm just loving this series here's the quote that I want to read from the brutal telling look it's a huge mistake to judge others by ourselves. One of the first things you learn with Chief Inspector Gamache is that other people's reactions aren't ours. And don't ever think you know what someone else is thinking, never mind feeling. Whew, so good. So it's so true. We often want to judge others based on how we would react in a situation when they're their own person and they have their own experiences and their own background that they're bringing to it. And we can't just judge what they're doing based on what we might do. We have to really take into account who they are, what they're experiencing. And if you don't take the time to learn and listen and, and learn those things, then we should, well, you we shouldn't just be judging them anyway. So <laughs> again, a very timely thought to have in the last couple weeks. So, so good. Another mystery sequel that I read is the second in the Maisie Dobbs series by Jacqueline Winspear, Birds of a Feather. And this was a lovely short little book that I listened to just the other day. Well, over the last couple days. I love this series. This is more of a historical mystery. It takes place in the 1920s, I want to say. And Maisie Dobbs is our, our detective. And she takes on these cases. And she also is very psychological. She actually kind of has a little bit of like a psychic sense about things. She can go into a room and really like calm her sense, calm her own senses and breathing down and like feel things and perceive things, which is a little bit like frou-frou for me, but I love that she also goes into the psychology of, of a situation, of the cases that she takes on and not just the, the facts and what can be observed, but really tries to get into the mind of people and what are they thinking and feeling and, and goes beyond maybe the outside appearance of things. And I really love that. So I definitely enjoyed this um, second book in the series. I gave this one four stars. Or I should say, I think I gave this one um, four stars as well. Maybe three, because so far, even though I loved it, I don't know that it was my favorite of what I've read of, of the series so far, but three or four. I don't, you guys know I'm not that great with, with star ratings. Um, the quote I want to read from Birds of a Feather. Oh, I should say in this one, Maisie gets hired because she gets hired by this man because his daughter goes missing. Um, so we don't know if anything happened to this daughter. We don't know where she is. We do know that tensions between father and daughter were very, very high. Uh, they did not get along very well. And so Maisie is on um, a quest to find the daughter. And while on the process of trying to find Charlotte, um, a couple other women in town die who end up being connected to Charlotte's life. So it all kind of intertwines. And so Maisie isn't initially on a murder investigation, but she does try to figure out what happened to these other women. Is Charlotte in danger or not? Um, she has to try to figure out, first of all, where Charlotte is and then how is she connected? How is she, or is she connected to these other murders? So it does become a murder investigation to a degree, but it's really about finding Charlotte. So good, really loved this one as well. And here's the quote from this one. Again, another very timely quote. May I not sit in judgment. May I be open to hearing and accepting the truth of what I am told. May my, may my decisions be for the good of all concerned. May my work bring peace. Whew. Yes. Amen. <laughs> I agree, Maisie Dobbs. That's what I, how I feel too. And then finally, the book that I just finished last night, I want to say. So good thing I didn't do a mid-month wrap-up because I'm already a couple days late. But a book that I just finished last night listening to is the third in a series. I finished another series. Yay! This is Unbreakable by Sarah Ella. This is a YA fantasy series. Um, I don't think I'm going to end up keeping this series because if I had read them maybe all closer together, I might have enjoyed them much more. But this is just a three star for me. Another book that um, gave me kind of a lot of eye rolls. Sarah Ella is a Christian author and this whole series is like a huge allegory. Um, the the It's basically like good versus evil, light versus darkness, verity versus the void, which is what happens in here. And different people are carriers of the verity and carriers of the void. It just became a little heavy handed 
Um, but also it's intermixed with a lot of kind of pop culture, especially music references, Disney references, which can be a lot of fun. However, I don't think that it's going to necessarily stand the test of time because of those references, because it's a huge part of this series. So I, while I'm glad that I finished another series, I could have gone without reading this book and been fine. I definitely um, think it was just okay, maybe two stars, maybe three. I actually think it's probably more of two, which is like, I didn't like it. It was all right. But I think the, for the right people, it would be a fantastic read. Um, just for me at this time, I was just kind of like, well, I'm glad I read it. I'm glad I listened to it, finished it up. It's done. Cross it off the list. But it didn't really, I just didn't care at this point. I didn't care about the, the romantic relationships. And because this is the third, I can't tell you too much about it. Um, but we do follow Eliana in the first book. Um, she has kind of a birthmark on her face. And in the first book, book she is kind of taken to another world and we realize that 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 birthmark on her face has a lot more meaning than she ever thought and she was she had been bullied a lot had a very low self-esteem and throughout the course of the series um, definitely becomes more confident and learns to love herself which are all very like awesome things to read about I just didn't really care <laughs> anymore by this book but um, the quote that I just liked from this one is pure of heart doesn't mean without darkness. It means a desire for the light, which I thought was kind of cool because as humans, we all have uh, areas of darkness in our lives, areas where we need to grow and change. Um, but that doesn't make us not pure of heart. It's just having a desire for the light that makes us pure of heart. And I kind of thought that was beautiful. So that is it. These are the six that I have, five that I have here plus The Captive Maiden. So I finished six books so far this month. I um, would love to hear from you what you think about, uh, what you think about having a quote from each book. If Did you like that? Did it add a little bit of something? If you don't like it, let me know too. Don't give me a thumbs down, just tell me in the comments. I would much prefer, I would much prefer you letting me know if you don't like it. Um, I could take it either way. I'm probably gonna still do it at least for the month of June. We'll see about carrying on. I kind of like it because it makes me pay attention a little bit more to those quotes. I often find quotes that I like, but I usually don't do anything with them and then just kind of let it go <laughs> and forget about it. Um, I will real quick tell you, I am in the middle of five other books. So let me just share with you like a little sneak peek. By the end of the month, all of these, hopefully all of these will be read. I'm reading I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. It's a modern classic, classic? What would you call this one? I don't know, loving it. I'm about half, a little more than, a little more than halfway. I should have this done by the end of the weekend. Also loving A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tolls. Did not expect to be loving this one, but I am. Barely started Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien. I'm re really at the beginning of this one, but it's so, it does stop like here. So all of this is appendix. Anyways. But this one carries over into July, so even if I don't finish this in June, I'm okay with that. But I am starting, little by little. I'm reading a nonfiction, Men We Reaped by Jasmine Ward. This one is, it's heavy, and I, but I also really love her writing. This is her memoir of her life, but also of five men in her life, men in her life, who died um, at their own hand or at the hand of other people. And so we get to see her her relationship with these five people and also her growing up her memoir of her of life growing up in the deep south in, in mississippi so loving this taking it a little bit slow so good and then finally i'm reading gone with the wind which is kind of hard to read right now to be honest because it's like super cringy and like my eyes are, <laughs> my eyes are open to racism these days right it is not happy reading about how how people are talked about in this book and or disregarded or taken advantage of or whatever like it's it's right in front of my face and um i'm really appreciating the characters in here and i'm liking the story but i'm i'm not blind to the fact that this is a difficult book to be reading right now so but i am reading it making my way through 
there you have it. There's my first wrap up for the month of June. I'd love to chat with you. How, how has your reading been going? I feel like mine's been slow, but six books is not slow. So I'm doing all right so far for this month. I would love to hear from you. What is one of your favorites that you've been reading so far this month? And that's all. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the little bell so you know when another video comes from me. And I will definitely be talking to you in another video very soon. Bye. Did I say comment below? I mean, talk to me in the comments, right? That's a given. I hope. <laughs> talk to me. I want to talk to you. Let's get a little picture.